So we've got to solve this equation then, 5 sine theta minus 5 cosine theta equals 2 in this given range for theta. Now there's several ways that you can do this equation and one of the most popular ways, not that I would encourage it, okay, is to use the squaring method to basically square both sides of this equation. Why don't I like it? Well, you've got to be very, very careful towards the end because you could find yourself writing down invalid values for theta, as I'll show you. So let's just take this method where we're going to basically square both sides. So you could put brackets around all the left-hand side and square that out, and it equals 2 squared, in other words, 4. Basically, though, I'm going to just pull out 5 as a common factor. I think it's a bit easier to work with, but you can make up your own mind on that one. So I've pulled out 5 as a common factor here. And then you could, again, square it from this part point, if you like. But I'm going to divide both sides by 5. If you divide both sides by 5, you're going to get this result. Now I'm going to square both sides. So squaring the left-hand side gives me just sine theta minus cos theta all squared, and squaring the two-fifths gives me four twenty-fifths. So I'm now going to square this bracket out in the usual way. We're going to get sine squared theta minus twice the product of these two terms. That would be minus 2 sine theta cos theta, and then the last term squared. That's going to be plus cos squared theta. So we've got this particular equation. Now, we should pick up on a couple of identities. You should be familiar with the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. That's identical to 1. And also, this 2 sine theta, cosine theta, should recognize that as being sine 2 theta. I'll put them in here just as a reminder. Okay, so that means that I could take 4 25ths from both sides and I'll add what is effectively here sine 2 theta to both sides. So if you do that, you're going to get this result here. Okay, remember that one came from sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Now, if you work out 1 minus 4 25ths, you're going to get 21 25ths, and that's going to be equal to sine 2 theta. So, to get 2 theta, I just take the inverse sine of 21 25ths. And if you do this on your calculator, remember you should be working in degrees mode, so make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. If you do that, the result that you'll get for 2 theta will be 57.140 and so on degrees. Now, it's from here on that we've got to take a lot of care. So what I'm going to do is just remove those identities there. And this is the reason why I'm not wild about this particular method. If we were to look at this equation here and work backwards, if we were to square root both sides, sine theta minus cosine theta could equal plus or minus two-fifths. But we've seen that it's a positive value only. If it was a negative value, it would mean that sine theta minus cosine theta would be a negative value. Sine theta would be less than cosine theta. But for it to be a positive value, we need results where sine theta is greater than cosine theta. So our values of theta are going to be limited. Just to show you further, if we were to take the graphs of y equals cosine theta, illustrated in red here, and y equals sine theta, okay, you'll notice that they intersect at 45 degrees and 225 degrees between 0 and 360 degrees. And sine theta is greater than cosine theta between 45 degrees and 225 degrees. I've got it summarized here. And this would lead to positive results in this 
bracket here. So I'm looking at 2 theta. So if I was to double this range here, doubling the 45 is 90 degrees, doubling theta is 2 theta, and doubling the 225 degrees is 450 degrees. So I'm looking at a range for 2 theta between 90 degrees and 450 degrees. Now if we draw a quadrant diagram, we're looking for where sine is a positive value. And we should be familiar with this, that sine is a positive value in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So in the usual way, we draw two lines equally inclined to the horizontal. We'll mark those angles in as being exactly the same and they will be that 57.140 and so on degrees. Now when it comes to working out what 2 theta is, we need to find our solutions in this range. So for 2 theta being greater than 90 degrees, the first one starting from here has got to turn beyond this line here. There's our 90 degrees, so it's going to be the first one's going to occur when we turn to this blue line here. So starting from there, we're going to go all the way around like so until we hit that line. That's a possible 2 theta, greater than 90 degrees. Now where's the next one going to come from? Well starting from here again, we've got to turn all the way around, okay, beyond the 360 degrees to this next one. We should realize that 360 degrees plus a further 90 degrees is our 450 degrees up here. So we need a solution that goes from here all the way around, okay, like so, right the way around, past the 360 degrees, up to this blue line here. And that's a possible 2 theta, which is less than the 450 degrees, which would take us up to here, this line here. So we don't need to go around anymore, not to this blue line here. We've just got these two solutions for 2 theta. So what are those values? Well, from that point of view, we therefore have that 2 theta must be equal to, well, for the red one, it's going to be 180 degrees minus the 57.140 degrees. And that's going to be 122.85 and so on degrees. And I'll just mark that in as the red one. And for the green one, well, that's going to be 360 degrees plus another 57.140 degrees. And that's going to give us 417.14 and so on degrees. And just mark that in as our green version for 2 theta. So if you were to divide both of these answers by 2 now and round up to one decimal place, you're going to get 61.14 four degrees for one of them and if I divide this one by two you're going to get 208.6 degrees okay and both of these are to one decimal place one dp for short okay so as you can see this is quite a tricky way of doing this equation not a method that I would really encourage purely because we've got this complication that because we squared our equation, we are getting the possibility of having solutions which would have led to this bracket, sine theta minus cosine theta, being a negative value, all right? Which is not the case. It has to be a positive value leading to our result here of a positive two. OK, so hope you can see your way through that if you did try that method.